Hey everybody, so today is battle two of our D-Day campaign. It is a um, fictitious battle, but based on real events, where the SAS parachuted in the night before D-Day, and in some of the operations it wasn't just deception, it was also sabotage and linking up with resistance. So we'll have the Germans defending a piece of countryside just to the west of Cherbourg, where elements of the SAS did parachute in. So as we look at our map, our table, you have a cross intersection there. The road to the north side is on its way to Cherbourg. The road to the left is running to the west of the, uh, the west shore of the Cotentin Peninsula. To the south is heading towards St. Lo, and to the east uh, will eventually run down the beaches uh, to the east and south of Cherbourg towards Utah Beach. This scenario will impact Utah Beach and the American landings and uh, our mission. The Germans will place the Kriegsmarine which is composed of two squads, one headquarters, one medium machine gun crew, anywhere on the table. Their job is just to uh, secure the area, the bridges, the intersection, you know, the uh, telegraph lines, everything running through this area, the railroad tracks, uh, prevent partisan attack. Our attackers are three SAS squads, two British, one French. And two partisan squads. All of these troops have improvised bombs. Uh, so the total British force is five dice. The Germans will also have a reserve element of an R-35 and a regular Grenadier squad that come on to react. The total number of German dice is six dice. All right, so we have our setup prior to turn one. Herr Mark, my opponent, his dad was actually a German sailor in World War II who was pulled off of his e-boat towards the very end of the war, and he fought against the Russians as an infantryman after some quick training. I didn't know that until I gave Mark these troops. So he uh, is proud to command these fellas, and... They are pulling security in the middle of the town. They're ordered to guard this intersection and its vital uh, lines of communication. And as such, the SAS have a mission to blow the telegraph line, or the telephone line, right here. The bridge, right there. And they're going to set an explosive charge behind this tree and try to make an abatee at that road to block reinforcements heading towards the beach. So that is our setup before turn one. The SAS and their partisan allies can come on on the east, west, or southern table edges, but not from Cherbourg, which is where his reinforcements will come on starting turn three. All right, we are at the end of turn one, and... The Germans have uh, moved to protect the various objectives. And so the SAS came on from this table edge and ran uh, towards the, the barn here. And some partisans are heading at the barn from a different direction. The SAS here are approaching the intersection and the uh, telephone line objective, although they can support the bridge. These Kriegsmarine are positioned where they can protect the road, but still respond over to the, the telephone line. Medium machine guns moving around trying to figure out what to do with themselves. Command centrally located. Another squad over by the mill and the bridge. And then way over here, just to throw a monkey wrench and everything. A partisan squad has come on and they have orders to blow that abatee and frustrate the Germans over near the railroad track here. 
So that is where we're at at the end of turn two. Nobody shot at anybody. It is nighttime, so the ranges are limited. And we roll on, or correction, end of turn one, and we roll on into turn two now. Okay, here we are at the end of turn two. A lot has happened, especially over here at the bridge. The French and British SAS advanced on the Kriegsmarine squad uh, that had moved up over by the mill. And as you can see, the Kriegsmarine really got shot up by submachine guns and, and a Bren gun. Uh, they have two pins on them. They lost four guys. Uh, next casually, they're going to do a morale check wisely. Their commander has moved up, uh, taking some cover behind the barrels in front of the mill. But the partisans are, are also running out, hoping to uh, finish off the Kriegsmarine and assist in the demolition of the bridge. So the Germans are very hard pressed on this flank. Over here, we gave the German medium machine gun team light cover for the road ditch, because realistically the road is a little bit elevated, and for the telephone pole, and they are setting up their MG34 there, which then prompted the SAS, uh, the British SAS team to hop into the ruins here, because they don't really want to tangle with an MG-34 at that range. Over on the other flank, the Kriegsmarine realized that the partisans moving um, across the railroad tracks, uh, apparently Henri uh, stepped on a thick branch and made a loud crack, and the Kriegsmarine realized that they cannot lose that objective uh, at that that tree on the corner there, which the partisans are planning on blowing up and turning into an abatee. And over in the woods, we see that the partisans advanced across the railroad track and are entering the forest. Unbeknownst to the uh, SAS and their partisan allies, this turn will usher in the, uh, the beginning of the German reserves and they will come on from Cherbourg to the north this turn. So their dice have been added to the bag. The night firing has been interesting. Really, it's been close range stuff. And it's been uh, very bloody th thus far over by the mill. We'll see what happens this turn. All right, this night fighting is getting close and brutal. And we had tons of people failing pins. They, they were suppressed and they didn't want to get up and shoot. So over here, there is one lone Kriegsmarine NCO remaining by the mill pond over there. The rest of his squad having been butchered by these British SAS. The Kriegsmarine were in a great position to fire, but the pin they were carrying forced them to go down, and, and it just really got ugly. Um... And then the SAS on the bridge, they had to go down because they got shot at. I'm sorry, the, the Kriegsmarine didn't go down. The Kriegsmarine shot at the SAS on the bridge. They missed because the SAS went down. That's how that played out. I have to get my details correct. Over here, the German command team advanced on the partisans in the field and figured they could mercilessly slaughter them, which kind of played out. Uh, they inflicted two casualties, one of them being a critical hit, being the leader. Uh, they, the uh, partisans, then when they got their order, carrying the pin, losing the leader, they went down. So they are down in front of the German command team right now. It could get straight up ugly. Over here, the SAS had moved into this heavy cover the turn before and decided they could not let that medium machine gun set up in the road ditch. So they came out uh, ready to assault. And they, so they advanced, they shot, and they thought, okay, we're going to assault next turn. And they did abysmal damage to that MMG team, only killing one guy and inflicting one pen. So they thought, oh, we're in the open, we're going to get machine gunned. But the Kriegsmarine failed their morale check to do an order, and they went down and weren't able to shoot at the SAS. So the SAS in the open had a 
you know, an angel watching out for them because they should have been done out there in the open. But it's not all peaches and cream for the SAS because the Kriegsmarine are coming back down the road. And you say, well, why did they abandon that objective? Well, that's because the Germans get reinforcements. And over here, we had an R-35 Panzer 35 that came on. And uh, they've machine gunned these partisans, and they're going to probably finish up their work in the next turn. The partisans uh, took the pin, couldn't do an order. They went down um, because of that pin, and, and they're in a precarious position. Over here on the road, the regular German Grenadier squad has come on from Cherbourg, and they are advancing down the road toward the intersection where they hope to eradicate the SAS Raiders. So that is it for turn three, rolling into turn four. Okay, end of turn four, the map looks really differently. So the medium machine gun still cannot get its act together. Herr Mark's dice have been wretched this game. Am I wrong on that, Mark? You're absolutely correct. <laughs> Painful. Painful. Horrible dice. The SAS, who were in the road and should have been dead meat, uh, survived again. And with the night fighting rules, the troops that moved up, the Kriegsmarine squad that was walking down the road came around the corner, moved up with these fellas, tried to shoot at the SAS in the road but couldn't see them. There were no muzzle blast markers or anything on them, and, and they just didn't hit what they were shooting at. They shot at shadows. The SAS, so close to the enemy, they felt, okay, now's the time to charge forward. They charged forward, they knocked that squad out, and then repositioned back two inches, and they're considering their, their next turn moves uh, and how to take out the command and MMG squad, uh, remembering that they're still standing in the open, and if it's a gray dice, it could get ugly quickly. The German regular grenadiers are coming down the road, towards that objective that needs to be taken and blown. So I don't know that four SAS troopers can hold them off, but they're going to give it a try. And they are going to be assisted by these partisans who miraculously, even without their leader, passed their morale and moved up behind these sandbags. They're going to try and slow down the advance of the Grenadieren. Over here at the bridge... The SAS own that objective, and there will very soon be an explosive charge planted on it. And then over here, the R-35 attempted a tank assault, but the partisans passed their morale and uh, have escaped into the forest where they will be advancing towards that corner where they need to set their explosive charges. So, all in all, it's an interesting turn. We'll see what happens rolling into turn five. All right, so things are looking a little different at the end of turn five. Oh, pardon me while I dump my box of tools there. That's embarrassing. All right, so over here, the partisans were shot and destroyed by the Kriegsmarine Command. The grenadiers came up the road. And uh, they totally plastered a French SAS team that moved up to take the position that the partisans were shot out of. So that has been a very bloody corner. Over here, this SAS team went down to try and survive some fire from the uh, Kriegsmarine MMG team. It was a good thing they did because uh, there were quite a few that would have been hits had they not gone down. Over here, the British SAS team has planted their explosive charge, and that objective will be won. It will be going up in smoke. Over on the flank, the partisans over by the, the woods have gone down in the woods just to keep this tank busy and parked by the tree they were going to blow. So, that 
is where we're at at the end of turn five. Now apparently I have a little bit of a mess to pick up as I dropped my token box all over the floor. And uh, then we'll move on to turn six. So it's definitely a, a bloody turn, turn five. Hopefully the SAS can pull it out and, and blow not only the bridge, but the telephone lines. We'll see what happens. All right, at the end of turn six, we have a bloody intersection. This two-man SAS team uh, went down when fired upon uh, last turn and could not get themselves moving this turn. So they remained down and, and pinned, and, uh, and they took some casualties by the Grenadierin who moved up and uh, that objective at the telephone line is going to remain safe, unfortunately. Over here, um, the German command team uh, wiped out the partisans that took cover behind that uh, barricade. In the previous turn, uh, French uh, SAS moved up, took that position, got hurt really badly, uh, so the better part of Valor was for the remaining SAS uh, NCO to run off. So he's run off this way and he's going to uh, melt into the countryside. Over here, the demolition charges have gone off. And the British SAS uh, made a run for it and will continue off the table because the they need to live to fight another day and, and raise their partisan friends. Over on the other flank, you see the R-35 parked at the road at the other objective. The partisans are in the forest and they are not going anywhere near that tank. So the road will remain clear of obstacles. So all in all, it was a good turn for the Germans, not a great turn for the British. The battle is a draw. Our victory conditions were if one objective were blown up, uh, it would be a draw. If two objectives were blown up, it would be a British victory. And if uh, you know no objectives were blown up, uh, then it would be a German victory. And so, you know, going into it, I wasn't sure that it was too hard on the on the uh, the British, but honestly, they weren't able to make the the kind of advances that uh, I had thought possible when planning the scenario, and I'm glad for that. So it was a good, challenging game, and because it's a draw, the American landings at Utah are not adjusted by any advantage for them or for the Germans at this point. So that American sector has uh, zero change from the base forces at this time, but we have many more scenarios to do with the airborne, etc. Our next scenarios will probably be an American airborne pathfinder scenario, and then it's on to Pegasus Bridge. So stay tuned. <laughs>